So you have an election coming up, I'm told, come November. And at least some of the people that are taking a look at this are saying your district may actually be up for grabs. How do you see it? They're wrong. Um, I'm very excited to run again in November. I take my job extremely serious. Um, last election I won by 17 points. The president lost my district by five. That's a 23 point swing. Um, I feel very confident going into this election. We have a great team in place. We're working very, very hard. So, Congressman, it's interesting you put, made the, uh, the point about the president's performance versus yours. To what extent will you be running, as it were, with the president? As I look through your positions, it looks like you're aligned with him on an awful lot of issues. Is that the way you see it? Well, we're focused on results, and I think that the American public has seen what Congress has accomplished. Look at more people today have uh, money, in, more money in their pocket. Um, jobs are being created. Uh, we have higher wages. In fact, I go around my district, and I'm talking to small business owners, and small business owners are telling me the biggest challenge they're facing right now is getting people to fill these jobs. They need more people uh, with with higher um, uh, quality job fillers. And of course, your district is part of the ideological center of California conservatism, but some people are pointing at, pointing to just huge changes in the demographics of that whole area. Will that be an issue for your race? Listen, um, the demographics in Orange County may be changing a bit, but we are bringing them in uh, to um, our party, and we are looking again at the results. And I think when you look at um, the people and the constituents in my district, they see um, what Congress is doing and the fact that they feel we are better off and America is moving in the right direction. We had in the program your opponent as well, Katie Porter, and she's emphasizing her support for Senator Sanders' Medicare for All health care program. Um, how is she regarded in your district? Because it seems that the Republicans are targeting, saying that she's too liberal. Well, she's a student of Elizabeth Warren's, and she's very far to the left. She wants government-run health care, which is going to cost us $32 trillion. I don't know how she thinks we're going to pay for it, because that's going to be on the backs of the hard-working um, men and women. And um, she is just out of step with uh, the constituents in uh, the, the 45th District. Congressman, one of the things we hear from Democrats is that health care will be a very large issue in this election. Is that true in your district in particular? Are people concerned about how they're going to pay for their health care, whether you like Obamacare or hate it, just concerned about paying for it? Well, people are more concerned about making sure they can put food on the table and making sure that they have a job and that they have a good wage. That's the number one issue in the district. And um, in my district, as I mentioned, going around talking to my constituents, they feel that our policies that Congress is putting forward are the right policies and that this country is moving in the right direction. You know, under the uh, past administration, um, we had high unemployment. In Orange County right now, our unemployment is at 2.8 percent. It's the lowest unemployment that we have had in decades. And that's what's important to the constituents in my district. Well, you had high unemployment at some point, but what was it on the day of the election for President Trump? I dare say it wasn't that high. Uh, uh, 2.8 percent is, is what it is now. I don't know what the unemployment rate was when it was um, on the first day of the election of Donald Trump, but I do know it has gone much lower since uh, these policies have been put in place. Right. Um, what about... Um the fact that we are seeing, uh, when we're talking about health care, those are very issues that can be very important to your constituents. What about national issues like the special counsels, uh, Mr. Mueller's probe, or other issues like Judge Kavanaugh being appointed to the Supreme Court? How important are those issues for your constituents? Well, I mean, people hear about them, but they're not as important as I think uh, the media would like to make them uh, as, as, the, as much as the media would like it to be. Um, of course, Mueller needs to finish his investigation, and I do firmly believe that Kav uh, Kavanaugh will be appointed and uh, confirmed uh, by the Senate. Uh, but at the end of the day, I believe that people, hardworking Americans, 
in my district really are concerned about everyday life issues, and that is raising their families, putting food on the table, knowing that they're living the American dream. That's what's important. It's what you can touch and feel. And as we continue to move forward in Congress and put our, our agenda forward, um, I believe that we are um, answering to the American people and we're keeping our promises. Uh, so uh, going beyond the specifics of the Mueller investigation, let me ask a more broad question, and that is some people call it corruption. We have a viewer writing in actually asking me to ask you about what she or he calls a lack of morality uh, surrounding the White House. We have the Manafort trial, which is pending right now. We had one of your colleagues who's under indictment now for insider trading. Is that of concern to you and or your constituents? I think every administration has faced challenges when it comes to issues like that. And that's why we have a justice system. And I firmly believe in the justice system. And if somebody has done something wrong, then they, then they need to be um, held responsible for it. And so I don't think you can look at to this administration as having any different issues than previous administrations have had. So f finally, to wrap this up, we've heard various projections now on what will happen in this election in November, and we'll know about it at the day after the election. But we have like 538 projecting a 75 percent chance of it going to the Democrats. We got Larry Sabato with Crystal Ball saying it's moving in that direction. How do you see it, not only in your district, but across the country? What are the odds, do you think, of the Democrats retaking a majority in the House? I don't think they're going to w get a majority in the House, and I'll tell you why. We have won eight out of the nine uh, special elections so far, and that's historic. And if there was going to be a blue wave, they would have been able to win some of those special elections. I look specifically in my own district, and I just don't see it. I mean, we have got people that are very happy with what's going on. Um, I, I mentioned to you before, I won last time by 17 points. I work extremely hard, and I just don't see that blue wave uh, happening.